now. They come up out of the scrum and Mark Carroll is throwing them. Andrew Jones is looking for Goddard. He's into Goddard. Carroll is into his opposition prop forward. And the origin of the Sydney Football Stadium has really blown up. And there's Andrew Jones trying to get around. The oh, on. he's landed it right, right on the picker. I just needed a call to bring to arms. Carry the ball, fight. Half time I went out and I said, cow dogs on. And, uh, the, and Joey Johns looked at me and he went, oh. and, uh, and when the call came out, cow dogs on. Beaver bends his, not, not a bad bone in his body. Beaver's looked up and he said, oh no, not the dreaded cow dog. Beam, Spud Carroll. Love Spud Carroll. He just went in there. Whack, whack, whack. Look at his lips. Joey Johns got knocked out. Spitting blood. Oh, it was beautiful. We got people, who cares? And uh, that's, what, that's what legends are made of. And wow. So the cattle dog has been very good to me. And uh, they still call me the cattle dog, even today. I love it. One of the most famous chapters in Origin history, and uh, you were both part of it, Jeff Turvey, Mark Carroll, mm. Spud, Tommy mm. clearly thought the world of you. Yeah, he certainly did. Um, it's been an emotional day. I'll try and get through this. Um, yeah, big bloke who cries. I'm one of those guys. Um, Tommy has been a massive part of my life. Um, to go into Origin, as a kid, I'm a para junior. I used to love him taking on Ray Price, but to go on the camp and you hear all the stories. Um, we didn't train for the first three days, just on the drink and getting together. But the first time he, he sat us down, he goes, I hate these blokes. And we're gonna have a call, it's called Catalog. And we're gonna, th and, and I remember Joey said, what's that? He said, well, it means, it means fight. He goes, you just can't do that, Tommy. He goes, when I call it, it's on. Anyway, it took game three. Um, I knew he was gonna call it. And the poor bloke who copped it was uh, Craig Smith in that scrum, you can see. He just bind long. I just went straight right hand. It's the only right hand I've ever landed in life. And the scary thing for me was after that game, he got me in the headlock. And back then he was a very heavy smoker and he had the breath of dead set 40 hour stations. <laughs> and he said, well, I love you, Spud. And uh, yeah, it's ever been since. Um, to this uh, day, Ben, I, every day, every state of origin, since I've retired, I ring Tom Radonikas up. And with a croaky voice like that, he goes, hello, and I go, Cattle dog, he goes, oh, I love you, Spud. And as Les Boyd said, mate, he used to say, I love you. Mate, he was one hell of a human, mate. When the Origin camp came together, Spud, what was his ability to, you, you, you two, what was his ability to, to get that bond with you guys? What, what, what made him able to draw you all together so I well? think um, the thing about Tom, Tommy was he wasn't a, he wasn't a talker. He was a doer, and and you, when he did talk, you knew, you knew he could back it up. So he'd been there and done that. Mm. A lot a lot of coaches might talk the talk, you know, with the cattle dog, but you you knew if he was in your place, he would do exactly what he was telling you to do. And I think that's the difference between that's why Tommy was a coach. You you wanted to listen to and you you wanted to to, to please him. Yeah. And I can only imagine what he was like um, to be alongside as a player and to play on his team because he'd be leading from the front. And I'll tell you what, if you weren't following behind him, well, you wouldn't be in the team next week because you had to get behind him. I can't imagine what it must have been like pre-game in a New South Wales dressing shed before taking on Queensland. I mean, how did he keep it together? Hey, they always have a cigarette in his hand, but now we're just, uh, the build-up was always, you know, everyone got the camp back then, it was 10-day camps. First three days, as I said, no training. I remember the first time we actually went out and he goes, now boys, go out and get your best kid on. We're going out and we're not coming home. Well, I come home, mate. I remember dragging him out of some place about five o'clock and he, with those glasses and the, and the string. Remember the string? He used to wear the string. <laughs> That'd be dangling down and it all the way home. I was, but I love you, I love you. But he's just, uh, as a coach, um, I've had some great coaches. He was just a great man manager. He wasn't the best coach, seriously, but he... He had so many great players around him. He just let us do well, the work. That's what I'm trying to say, Spud. He, 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 he talked the talk, 
but you know he could walk the walk. And that's what, that's what yeah. he he said some some crazy things, but he meant them, and you knew he meant them because the passion he, he, he delivered them in, and you knew he would back it up as well. Yeah. I reckon the only time the only story time I've ever heard him look at that photo. where he didn't back up that's his own genius. where he didn't back up his own words was one night he, he had the, the Blues in camp. He said, "Boys, we're going out tonight. Queensland is somewhere in town. They'll be out tonight, and if they." end up the same place as us, you're not to talk to them. Well, New South Wales ended up at the Bourbon. It's a little while later, Queensland ended up at the Bourbon. And Alfie and Kevy, who played with him at Ipswich and were scallywags, couldn't help, oh, Tommy, we love you, come here. Tommy's like, boys, I can't talk, I can't talk to you. Because <laughs> Tommy threatened anyone from New South Wales that spoke to Queensland, they were this out. This week, you're white. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you're Alfie and yeah, Kevy. Right. Right. We're going to go to the Sackville Hotel in Belmain now where our own James Super has tracked down a, a bloke who played for Tommy when he was uh, coach of the West Magpies. In fact, I think this man was one of Tommy's favourite players, Hoops. Evening, Ben. Absolutely. John Scandalis of West Magpies. And West Tigers premiership winning prop was one of Tommy's favourites. Now, Scando, first things first, a sad day, but a celebration. Have you had a cold beer in memory of Tommy today? Mate, I have had, I've had a couple. Just uh, I'm sure that's what he wanted, so... I'm pretty sure he probably won't have a bit more, but two for now is uh, good enough to, uh, for his honour, yeah. He'd have a twinkle in his eye, no question. Now, let's set the record straight. Fact or fiction? The Magpies 1999, you had a lot of touch-ups. You were flogged one day at Campbelltown, and the legend has it that the day after, he told the whole team they were going to Chili's Hill, there was a carton of beer, a packet of cigarettes, and Tommy did the rest. Take us through it. Yeah, pretty true, mate. That's a true story. So I, I don't remember that. I, th I think it was the Raiders. I always say the Raiders. Somehow they, they pop in my mind. They flogged us. It was 30 nil half time. By the end of the game, it could have become 60 nil. I can't, can't really remember the score. But he came into the shed. We were preparing for that that ear blast. You know, they just giving it to us. He didn't say much. He just looked at us and he said, "See you tomorrow, boys, at Chilly Hill." So meet here at nine and see you at the, at the over. We got we rocked up at Camelltown Stadium the next day sore you can imagine you know, losing the game 60 nil or whatever it was you'd be sore because you did so many so much tackles um now we started jogging over to chili's hill uh it was about i don't know a kilometer away from the camel town stadium and we see tom we see this car sitting on top of the hill and it was a big hill it was about probably 800 meters around in total tommy's up there with his six pack the race guide cigarettes and the race is blowing blaring on the radio the car radio and we jog up there, no water, and he, he basically just says, start running, boys. And that's what we did. We ran for about an hour, just round this circle, round and round and round and round. But obviously Tommy wasn't, you know, counting how many laps we were doing. And I was coming up the hill, and behind me was Andrew Leeds. And Tommy wasn't obviously seeing that Andrew Leeds had lapped me three times already. But he just sees Andrew Leeds behind me, and he yells out to, to Leeds, come on, Leeds. That fat front row was beating you and Leesy looked up in a bit of a bit of anger. It's the first time I've ever seen Andrew Lees blow up and say, mate, I've lapped him three times. And I think that was the point when he realised we'd had enough. Uh, he called us all in, looked at us and said, see the training tomorrow, boys, ready for next week's game. And that was basically the story. So That was the great Tommy Rodonicus. He was a one of a kind. John Scandalis will let you go and have a cold beer at the bar in his memory. And over here, Ben, stay with me. Believe it or not, I've done this before, walking around pubs. Benny Elias, uh, the great one and only Benny Elias. Now, just talk us through your fondest memory of Tommy Rodonicus. Yeah, well, I remember very first meeting him at the sports ground. Uh, I was 15 years of age. He was playing for the Magpies, and he was one of my real heroes. And... Um, I asked him for an autograph and he wrote the autograph, he said, to one wog from another wog, all the best. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, and I loved him forever oh, and a day, uh, absolute legend. He certainly was one of the characters, one of the cancel culture will go with that. Now Blocker, hey, Stephen man. Blocker Roach, your memories of the great man. Sad day, but he's the last of the Mohicans, Tommy Rudonicus. I reckon there would have been a few halfbacks the night before they played against Tommy, tossing in their bed and not sleeping properly. I can tell you, I reckon there would have been a few forwards too. Tommy took on anyone. Yeah, no question. He was a one of a kind, one of the greats. Thank you very much to Ben Elias and Steve Roach. That's it from here at the Sackville Hotel, Ben. Thanks, Hoops. You behave yourself. Um, so the stories we're hearing in this show and we'll hear all week, as we said, the, the wake for Tommy Rodonicus could go for days. Uh, are all got a similar theme. Yes. Uh, but I might just leave the last word for you, to you, Spud. Well, the last time... Um Tommy was a coach from myself after I retired. It was a charity game and we're drinking beers. It was New South Wales old school versus the Queensland. Anyway, before the game, I said, Tommy, you know, 
and he used to slap you, mate. Can you give me a slap? He goes, oh, no, but I can't do that. I said, mate, come on, Tommy, slap me. So he went bang, bang. I said, no, give it to me. He absolutely belted me. And my hair went on the back of my neck. I was went, oh, how good's this? And he goes, oh, I love you, Spud. And that was the, uh, that's the great memories of Tom Rodolphus. He clearly did love you, and he was clearly a bit crazy. I think we've ticked both those boxes. Uh, we'll leave it there. Jeff Turvey, Mark Carroll, thanks for sharing.